Hi, I'm Dean DeMarzo here on Longest Solo Ever, and this is a tutorial on the basics of using an EQ. What they are, when to use them, and how to use them. That's all coming up now on Longest Solo Ever. So here we are for this week's quick tip music video on some mixing tips. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the very basics of using an equalizer or an EQ. Now this is one of the most important effects we're going to use. It's one of the simplest, uh, but it's one of the most misunderstood and uh, you know can seem really daunting when you're just starting out. Uh, we're here in the session we made last time. Uh, this is the session we used for the volume and panning tutorial we did last week. And uh, just to refresh how this sounds, here's, here's what we're working with here. It's got this nice clean verse up front, and then we get this kind of heavier chorus in a second. And that's sounding pretty good right now. And all we'd done last time was adjust some volume and panning on each track. Uh, but there's more we can do to improve the sound of each of these individual tracks and to make them fit better together as a whole. And that's where EQ is going to come in. Uh, my main EQ of choice is Isotope's Neutron Equalizer. Uh, this is part of the Neutron plugin, but I like just using the EQ on its own uh, for the most part. Now, if you've ever used the EQ on a stereo or even just the treble, middle, and bass knobs on your amplifier, uh, this is just the same thing. We're going to be adjusting the highs, the mids, and the lows, or the treble, mid, and bass frequencies of each of these instruments uh, to get the sound we're looking for. Uh, I have the piano track pulled up right now, soloed, uh, and we're going to take a listen to what's going on there and see what adjusting each of those different ranges does to the piano. So here's our piano track. Now listen what happens as I boost the highs using this band all the way on the right here. Now that was pretty extreme, but you can hear the, uh, the kind of readiness of those strings and the real attack of the hammers came right out when I did that. Now listen, as I pull that down, that sound is going to go away and it'll eventually sound kind of muffled. Let's take a listen to the lows next. Uh, so the lows are the bass frequencies, the really low sounding thumpy frequencies that kind of hit you in the chest. So as I boosted that, we got a really overly bassy sound. I'm kind of pushing it way too far right now, just so you get an idea of what each of these frequency ranges sound like. Uh, and as I pulled it away, it sounded really empty and thin. I'll show you that one more time. Now, neither of those is something you should necessarily do in an actual track. Uh, if that's the sound you're looking for, by all means, go for it. Uh, but we're mostly going to be making much subtler changes to the sound. Uh, finally, we have everything in between, which is just kind of generally referred to as the mids or the mid-range. Uh, there are high mids and low mids, and you'll even often refer to things by their actual frequency name, uh, say 400 hertz or 2K for 2000. Here's what the mid-range in general sounds like. I'm going to use a very wide frequency band. The mid-range is a really complicated range to work with for a lot of reasons. For one, it's where most of the tone of the instrument lives uh, with most instruments. Guitar, piano, vocals, even bass guitar has a lot of sound and tone in the mid-range. And when you cut it out, uh, while it can sound a lot cleaner, it's often lacking most of the body of the sound. So working with the mid-range can be very complicated. So let's look at a real practical example for this. Uh, we're going to start with these clean guitars we have in the verse. Mm -hmm. 
Now, they sound pretty nice, but I'd like them to have a little more uh, shimmer, a little more top-end, high-end frequencies, so they can stand out above the drums a little bit more and just kind of shine a little bit. And what's really nice about Neutron, this equalizer, is during playback, it shows you a spectral analysis of the track you're listening to. So that lets us really visually see what's going on with the track, and we can find where most of that top end tone is going to live. Let's take a look again. I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere around here, because this seems to be where most of the frequencies end, but first and foremost, you should mix with your ears, not with your eyes. So I'm just going to listen for where I like this the best, where I'm getting the sound I was looking for. All right, let's compare before and after our EQ move. So listen to how much brighter they sound with the EQ versus without the EQ. Let's hear it in the mix now. They feel a lot clearer in the mix. Uh, I've, I've improved the clarity of those tracks just with this one little EQ move. Uh, another really common use for EQ is to cut out low frequencies in tracks that just don't need them. Uh, the only tracks that, in my opinion, really need low frequencies are kick drum and the electric bass. Things like electric guitar, uh, even acoustic guitar, really don't need those low frequencies. They'll just be fighting with the low frequencies in the bass and the kick. So we're going to cut them out with this EQ. I'm going to use what's called a high pass filter because it only allows high frequencies to pass through to cut out some of the low end in the electric guitar. First, let's listen to just how much low end there is in this electric guitar part. So all that rumble is down there, whether we hear it right away or not. I'm going to use a high pass filter to cut that out. This one's a bit more subtle. I'm going to turn these up so we can hear them really clearly. And we're going to listen to with and without this cut we just made. Now, if you're listening on headphones or studio monitors, you heard that change right there. Uh, laptop speakers or a phone definitely won't reproduce those lower frequencies. Uh, but all that did was reduce a lot of this rumble and uh, almost like a hum that's going on down there. So we want to cut that out so we have room for the kick and the bass. Now, similarly, on the bass track, I want to make the opposite cut. Uh, because the guitars take up that mid-range, they want that all to themselves. I'm going to cut out a little bit of space in the bass track so they can fit together like puzzle pieces and have a nice, clean, balanced mix. So here's just how much mid-range tone is going on in the bass. <laughs> We're going to carve just a little bit of that out. And listen to how clearly these parts fit together now that we've made this change. So here's with our EQ changes. And without. Again, this is a more subtle effect, uh, but depending on the song you're working with, the tracks you're working with, this can be absolutely essential for making your mix fit together well. Uh, also, this will be a lot clearer if you're listening on headphones or monitors, as I said. So that was just the beginning of what you can do with a little bit of EQ and a good ear. Now, the best thing you can do right now is grab these tracks for free from my website. I'll put the link down below, and you can download this entire Pro Tools session and play with the volume, the panning, and now the EQ.
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos posted every Sunday, live streams every Wednesday, and quick mix tip videos like this posted every Thursday. Don't forget to grab the audio tracks for free from my website. Again, I'll put the link right down below, or you can go to longestsoloever.com to download them. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will get back to you either there or cover them in a future video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.